we dared to dream. You know, to say you have a dream that you want to pursue, it's, it's not an easy thing to do when you grow up in a city like Boston in, in the early 80s. For whatever reason, we just, we kept believing. What's the best life advice you've ever heard? What words do you live by every single day? What's most important to you? I'm Sarah Kuhn, and it's my mission to help you become the best version of yourself, to love yourself today, right now as you are, to be wholly and unapologetically you, to be you. In this video, we're looking at the best advice that I've ever heard from one of my favorite people in the world, Donnie Wahlberg. Whether you know him from his hit TV show, Blue Bloods, or from his band, New Kids on the Block, Donnie is known for inspiring his fans with unconditional love and support. Rule number three is my personal favorite, and I'd love to hear what yours is. If you hear something that really resonates with you, make sure that you leave it in the comments below. Here's Donnie's 10 rules for success. When you said, you know, you learn to love yourself um, and that you can't really love anyone else until you do that, that's, that's it. That's life. And, you know, I write all these tweets and these words of wisdom. And, you know, I, when I write that stuff, I'm not telling anybody what to do. I, sometimes I write it for myself. I'm sitting in the mirror at work, getting ready to shoot blue bloods and, you know, the makeup guys or the girls putting eyebrows on me because my fucking eyebrows disappear. <laughs> I'm just sitting there like, I got bags under my eyes. I'm like, I look like shit. I'm a 44-year-old man. I don't feel good today. I don't look good today. I don't smell good pretty much every day, but that's a lot of And, you know, we feel like this too. And um, it happens, you know. But the thing that really gets through it is self-love and finding a way to always remind yourself to love yourself first. You know, if you wake up in the morning and you, you hate yourself, and you walk outside, you ain't gonna love nothing. You ain't gonna love the sunshine, you ain't gonna love the trees, the birds, you're not gonna love none of it. If you come on this cruise hating yourself and with negative thoughts about yourself, it's just gonna be negative, you know? It can rain on the boat the whole weekend, and you could be mad about it. You could be hating about it, but... You know, the sun could come out and burn your ass, and it could be worse, you know? Um, but loving yourself is, is the key to all of it. And, you know, without getting too personal in the, the years since I first met you guys, and met so many fans, to be quite honest, um, so many of you who I've met and gotten to know a little bit, I see changes in you. And, you know, it's not anything we did, it's what you did. You know, you discovered something in this with you and your friends that inspired you. You know, it didn't make you do anything. We didn't make you do it. You did it. You were inspired to, you know, to rediscover what makes you happy, not what makes somebody else happy. And if you don't do that, you know, there's a reason on the airplane when the oxygen mask comes down, they say, put yours on before you kid. When I first saw it, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Gotta help the kid. <laughs> and if you die, <laughs> the kid ain't just gonna need more help than that. You know, so you put your oxygen mask on first. Love yourself first. Be happy first. And everything else will be good. Everything else will be good. That's it. But about people giving you sh sh And I know there's a lot of ladies, and I'm sure some of you have been in bad relationships and, and this and that. And, you know, people who give you sh sh don't let them, don't let them, but don't let them in a way that, you know, you don't have to fight, you don't have to get, you know, you just have to love yourself, just love yourself, and that's what you're doing, you're standing up to them by doing what you love, I'm not asking you to, I'm not saying this so you say, I'm going to keep going and spend my money, you know, I'm saying it because it's true, people say it to me, are you still in a boy band? <laughs> You're 44, man, and they say it about our fans. You know, people tease you guys about us. You still follow those guys, those old men. Is, or they, you, they say it to me. You know, look at it. Look at it. You got old ladies standing outside your trailer at work. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Not everybody says it. 
and we always like we still call you guys girls i mean you're girls to us you know it's it's we don't let people talk about you that way and it's it's because we respect you and we respect ourselves you know we know there's something greater and it's it's okay if people outside don't understand it it's okay that's they got this that we don't understand <laughs> You know what I mean? I see people do real, real weird ish and then ask me what I'm doing in a boy band with all these screaming women. They wish they were doing this. They wish. And you know what? A lot of people wish they love themselves enough to just do what makes them happy, but they don't. They don't. And if, if I don't love myself enough to do what makes me happy, and I see somebody else doing it, I'm gonna hate on them. I would hate on them. So just keep that in mind. Keep it in mind. It's it's not easy. It's not easy if you got a picture of a band on your cubicle at work and someone saying, you know, or someone saying, he doesn't really write those tweets. <laughs> the problem the problem is never the problem. Remember that. The problem is never the problem. When somebody tells you the problem is, hey, you know, you, you're, you did this and you did that, you did that. Well, just look at them. Just look at them. I guarantee you what they're complaining about is not what is bothering them. They have got a problem. They got a problem and they need somewhere to put it. They need somewhere to put it. You know, I go on Twitter, I see people sending love and I see people being complete assholes. And I gotta stop and remind myself. And sometimes I forget and I'll, I'll hit them back. And then I feel like this shit after I hit them back. Because I even acknowledge them. The problem is never the problem. Somebody who has a problem with anybody, well, it's okay to go spend $800 to go see the Rolling Stones in the 90th row, but you can't go to see your favorite band in the front row for, for the same price? Or is it for $50? <laughs> <laughs> a cruise is expensive. I, uh, I know. I'm just saying, you guys do what you do. And if you move on from this, do what you do. But don't let anyone, and don't be fooled by anyone hating on you doing what you love. It's, it, the problem is not you, it is them, I promise you. It's a great song. It's an important song. And there's no song more in the world, not sung by new kids, that makes me think of you guys are this specific song. We're riding in a car, and she loves it, she wants to play it. I'm like, all right, but I'm going to be thinking up about we'll blockheads the whole time. <laughs> going on Twitter, I'm going to do some likes and some replies and say hello, because this is the song that I think of all you guys when I hear it all the time. So when I'm not near you, and you don't know who I am in the world, or what's the life going on, no. This song's playing, I'm seeing these faces right here. Just, Joey's been talking about NKTV all weekend. I watched a little today and I saw some crazy sightings of you on Much Music. But what I like, did you see that interview? The first time. That was like 30 years ago. And I talked about how smart and strong and powerful you guys are way back then. You're only more powerful now. You're only more powerful. You've been through life now. You've lived through life. You survived the bullshit, the hate. Beyond just your boy band, you survived real life ish. Trauma, struggles, challenges, with children, with loss, with whatever, divorce, you name it, you've been through it all. We've all been through it all, but my ladies, you've been through so much. And here you are. Living your life, celebrating your life, and doing what the hell it is you want to do. I'm so freaking proud of you guys. I was just a dumb fucking kid back then saying that shit, but I was right. You are strong. You are smart. You are powerful. You are love. You are everything that is right in this way. Oh, the world, my ladies, I love you so much. This song is dedicated to you. See you with all your own heart because you deserve every second of it. Let's go. Growing up.
up as a kid, yeah. you know, in our house, it was crazy. There was nine kids. Mm-hmm. I mean, we were on wow. food stamps, and all my brothers were getting arrested and going to jail. And yeah. I was fortunate enough to have fallen in love with music and started yeah. breakdancing and rapping yeah. and singing and met a music producer and found a career. And, uh, you know, it, it changed the fortunes of our family forever. But uh, it also... That's not all yeah. that that gets you respect, you know, because they don't just respect you for being famous in a city mm. like Boston. Not you gotta Boston, you gotta be real, and you gotta yeah. remember where you came from, and take care of people, and that's what we do constantly. You gotta yeah. keep exactly. Back. <laughs> right. hey, hey, listen, man, you, you can never do enough in Boston. You know? Right. You gotta you gotta you gotta keep keep going. New kids on the block is how people first discovered your name and your likeness and everything, but break dancing man talk about like that's what i loved about boston like when mm-hmm. I, I grew up in oakland so when we see you guys come out you know and you were doing new kids on the block we's like yo man these these white guys are kind of hard is it real or right. what was was it appropriation you know what i mean we would think you know we right you know did, did, did y'all ever have to for me uh, on the appropriation level i mean i would have to say it's a little it's deeper than that okay. because you know boston as a lot of people may or may not know i assume they do it's it's considered a very racist city yeah and they the reason it's considered that way is because in the mid 70s they started desegregating the schools uh-huh. and they bust white kids to black neighborhoods black kids to white neighborhoods so basically i grew up in a mixed neighborhood but ended uh-huh. up going to a school that would be the equivalent of of harlem okay so i became a minority in uh-huh. elementary school uh-huh. first grade second third all the way through high school i was basically a minority in school uh-huh. but i got exposed to all types of music uh-huh. all types of people culture understanding like it was it was different so outside those school buses people were rioting saying hey you ain't putting my kids in that flick out school and mm-hmm. bada, bada, bada. but for me i was just on the bus yeah and making friends and trying to get acclimated to a school to mm-hmm. go into school for the first time and you know i'd like to think that i'm the success story mm-hmm. of those awful scars on the city of boston you know that mm-hmm. I, i'm what was supposed to happen yeah is we were supposed to come to understand each other and be around each other not just physically but spiritually mm-hmm. i mean you know it's like what we're all crazy i mean we're 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 a mirror reflection of each other you know what i mean they look when you know they say to us you guys helped me through these hard times no we we really didn't you did it and we just were a, a little assistant you know you did all the work but you know when you wake up in the morning and you look for inspiration or you look for something or you look for something you connect with you go to what you what you want to see and what you see about yourself and and that's our relationship you know when i want a little you know love that you know or a little reconnect you know i'll just pop on twitter and just see all this love that just is constantly pouring our way and and we try to give it back as much as possible and they see in us the youth and exuberance and love and 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 respect that we see in them when we look out it's it's a it's just like mirror reflections so nothing nothing's crazy nothing. your first record didn't hit right away and then your second album came out and then it started surfacing and then people started like oh wait these guys had another album out cuz did you think i mean that there was like a, a lull in between i think we were just having fun though yeah. i think we just we we dared to dream you know in a in a time and place where most people didn't um we grew up very humble beginnings and you know all of us had tons of siblings and we're the younger on the younger end of the food chain in our homes and you know to say you have a dream that you want to pursue it's it's not an easy thing to do when you grow up in a city like Boston in in the early 80s i mean you know you could get hit with a brick for that kind of talk i'm serious and, and but for whatever reason we just we kept believing whether it was you know our connective relationship if one guy started to slip you know somebody else might be there to pick him up and say hey let's hang in there a little longer um whatever it is though we just we were having so much fun and performing and you know i think we all and i don't want to speak for everyone but i think all the guys would agree i think we all believed it was just a matter of time before it happened now what it was going to be nobody knew right. but you know we'd believe that it would happen and it did yeah. Yeah, and a so lot <laughs> if you guys had any advice for people obviously they're going through it everyone's going through a tough time right now with some people dealing with you know depression mental health and a lot of people clearly look up to the new kids as a huge part of their lives to bring them joy um do you guys have anything you could you know say to those fans that are asking you know any advice you might have to 
you know, find some of the, the, you know, the brighter side of any of this we're going through? I think too, what uh, just that very question itself is, um, is something as well. Like the fact that you, you asked the question, you know, is, is asking for help. You know, it's hard for everyone to directly help because we can't all be near each other. But I think just asking for help, reaching out for help, reaching out to talk to anyone. Um, you know, if you're in a really, really bad situation, you know, just being honest with your feelings and what you're going through. What, you know, like me and Jenny had to have a long talk yesterday. We were both sort of going through stuff and didn't even realize it. And just we weren't afraid to ask each other for help. And um, I think, you know, going online, you know, calling people in your area, whatever, local law enforcement, whomever you can, if you need help with anything, just don't be afraid to ask for help. There's nothing, we're all gonna go through major emotional shifts through this. Um, and it's important to just try to stay present. Don't think about how long it's gonna take to get through it, just get through today. Get through today and do whatever you need to do to get through it. And, and don't be afraid to ask for help and just try to stay positive as best you can. And for me, staying positive means staying in today. Sometimes life is that simple. You know, you just put it out there. And if you work towards it or stay open to it, it'll find its way to you. Maybe not in the way you expected. You know, maybe you might have, when you said, I'm going to meet them one day, you might have thought it was, you know, a month from that time, not 14 years later. <laughs> but you put it out there and it came. And you, you kept your heart open to it. And as far as the friends and the people you're meeting, you don't have to thank me, you know, you did it. You guys did it. Um, I do hear it all the time. You know, thank you because of you guys. I've met all these wonderful people. It's not because of us. It's because of you, all of you, these girls here. I mean, your sisters, so it doesn't count, but <laughs> it's like you found something that you enjoy. You love it. You want to spend your time being happy because it makes you happy. And when you started doing it, you found like-minded people. So, you know, people who, who radiate the same energy, you know, and, and for the most part with this band, that's, we hear that story all the time because it's true, but it's you guys finding kindred spirits, you know, who you connect with, who you relate to, who, who feel a certain love, you know, and want to enjoy themselves. And, Believe me, there's probably groups, uh, there's angry groups too. There's probably a cabin full of girls right now saying, hey, God, this son of a bitch is that. And you know what? It's okay. It's okay. There's a reason they're together too. Because that's where their spirit is at. That's where their spirit's at. They're not happy. You know, so they just go be unhappy together. And it's not wrong, it's okay. It's just where they're at. And that's who they hang around with, you know? It's it's not an accident. Um, we, 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 we're mirrors, we're all mirrors for each other. You guys see something yourselves in each other. That's what I see in, in all of you, you know? it's I get just as much out of you all as you all get out of us. Me personally, when I'm on stage, it's the most wonderful time of my life. You know, I look out and see myself. I, and what I mean is I feel all this joy and love when I'm on stage. And when I look out at the audience, I see it coming back. I see you guys feeling the same way. It, it's why I, I want to be on stage all the time. I never want to get off. Thank yourself. Thank, give yourself the credit for, for having the courage to do what you want to do and loving yourself enough to do it for you. Do it for you. Do it for you. Can't do anything for anyone if you don't do it for yourself first. And it's, in our world it sounds wrong. You know, I gotta love me first. It sounds like, what, an egomaniac? No. If I hate me, I can't love no one else. Love you, do it for you. And trust me, I come from a family of drug addicts and alcoholics like you can't even imagine. You, you only heard some of the stories in the newspapers and the TV. Um, how I ever made it through, 
you know, without being an alcoholic or drug addict myself is a miracle. I have no clue. And I, I have the gene. It's in me. You know, I just didn't like beer very much. And, uh, I couldn't handle wheat. <laughs> I couldn't handle it. <laughs> I tried it. I was like, oh! <laughs> I was all those things they said like, to scare you. That was me. I was like hallucinators. <laughs> like, oh my god! I told on myself. <laughs> Mom, I smoked weed and I'm freaking out. I'm sure she said, "Go that. tell your father." I said, "No." She said, "Go tell him." I said, "Dad, I gotta tell you something. It's bad." He said, "All right, tell me. I won't get mad." I said, "I smoked weed." He said, "Smack." <laughs> And you said you wouldn't get mad. I said, I lied. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's, uh, it, it's, it's going to sound redundant, you know, but just love yourself. Love yourself and keep going. Gratitude comes with self-love. You love yourself, you can feel, you know, you have gratitude. And if you always have gratitude, everything's going to be good. You show up on this boat, I'm grateful I could be here. Ten pesos for, for a dollar. It took all three jobs for her to be here. She could come on the boat and say, this is I spent all this pesos, or she could say, I'm so grateful to be here. And if you have that attitude, it's all going to be good. It's all going to be good. Thank you so much for watching. I'd love to know what clips inspired you the most and how you're going to apply them in your life. Please leave them in the comments below. If you want more information and inspiration, make sure you click on the link below to sign up for my weekly newsletter. Also, make sure you hit subscribe so you never miss a video. Thank you again for watching. I hope this video inspires you to be the best version of yourself, to love yourself today, right now, as you are, to be holy and unapologetically you, to be you. I'll see you soon.